Benmore. Benmore, what do you mean? You drive right past Weingarten because you didn't like the prices. So? You said their prices were too high. Stop right there. That was true. But now they're matching the lowest leading supermarket. You really believe that? I know that. Honey, I was there. Here's proof. A free weekly booklet with over 9,000 of their regular prices so I can see the lower prices. Kroger, take notice. You're no longer the low-priced leader. The new wine garden is matching you forever. KHOU TV Houston. Sandy Rivera with the news. Matt Musil on sports. Melvin Epps and the weather. This is the News Center 11 Weekend Report. Good evening, everybody. I'm Sandy Rivera. The president of Lebanon, Amin Jamal, is in Houston this evening, and he made a very emotional and a stirring speech. While the Lebanese president was speaking here in the United States, artillery duels and gun battles erupted across his homeland. Reports say 10 people were wounded in fighting between rival factions of the PLO in the eastern Bekal Valley. There was also major violence for the second straight day near Beirut. In other international news, the State Department refused to confirm or deny a New York Times report. It says that President Reagan has okayed secret plans to blockade Nicaragua. The Pentagon also denied comment. The Times says the plan calls for a possible limited blockade, new radar equipment in Central America, and stockpiling military supplies in Honduras later on this year. UN Ambassador Jean Kirkpatrick says U.S. Navy maneuvers next month may send the right signals to Nicaragua. The Navy plans to begin extended military exercises in Central America next month. These exercises, including the equivalent of at least one carrier battle group in both the Atlantic and Pacific waters off the coast of Nicaragua. Kirkpatrick says these maneuvers will demonstrate that Nicaragua's leftist government does not have monopolistic power. U.S. military weapons are creating controversy in our neighboring country to the north. There were refuse the cruise protests in all major Canadian cities and at least a dozen American cities. The demonstrations were against the Canadian government's decision to allow testing of U.S. cruise missiles in Canada. In Toronto today, over 3,000 people defied police and march down the streets. Seven members of that Greenpeace sheep warrior are free tonight. They were held all week by the Soviets for trying to film a Soviet whaling station on the Siberian coastline. Barry Peterson reports on the release of the anti-whaling activists. It was an ominous sight, the Soviet warship steaming alongside the small research vessel. But the Navy ship was just there to watch this meeting on the chilly, windswept Bering Sea, 20 miles from the Siberian coast. No Mayor Leo Rasmussen, acting as the State Department representative, was taken to the Russian ship. It was nearly midnight before the transfer started, a task made easier by calm seas and plenty of light in this Arctic season of the midnight sun. For the Greenpeace members, in perhaps a minute, they went from Soviet captives to homecoming heroes. The Soviets even gave back a confiscated rubber raft. For Greenpeace, it was one of the sweetest moments in the controversial history of the 12-year-old anti-whaling group. It had garnered international headlines and had recovered the missing crew members, who told their stories of being well-treated by Russian officials. Indeed, the Rainbow Warrior sailed the opposite direction, sailed toward home. Barry Peterson, CBS News, on the Bering Sea. The International Whaling Commission ended its meeting in England today, and only Japan, Norway, and the Soviet Union are bucking the Commission's worldwide ban on commercial killing of huge ocean mammals. But despite their refusal to halt whaling by 1986, the session recorded a major victory when Peru agreed to join that ban. Tonight, the president of Lebanon, Amin Jamal, is in Houston, and he did deliver a very emotional and stirring speech about his homeland, Lebanon. News Center 11's Bill Jeffries has been covering his Houston visit all week. 